I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> well, today I want to talk about this super, 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 super food. You know, we need to change the definition of superfoods. We shouldn't be allowing the food lobbies to define what a superfood is because when a food lobby de defines what a superfood is, it becomes expensive overnight. It's all that maybe triple or even more than that than the actual cost of that product. All of a sudden, that product becomes scarce. That product is packaged differently, although you have the same spice or the same kind of seed and it's sold for a lot more money. So we should be labeling the superfoods and not the food lobbies. When we look into our own traditional Indian cuisine, every country has their own traditional cuisine where people have been using food as medicine for years and years. When I say food is medicine, this doesn't mean that you replace all your medicines that you're on and you just jump off all the meds that your doctors put on. But believe me, if you really start using food and lifestyle as medicine, there is a huge possibility that you can work with your doctors to wean off your medication in most cases at some point. Today, the Indian superfood that I want to talk about is not a seed, it's not a flower, it's not an herb, it's not a spice. It's a mixture of all of these things. We know of it as something called kichidi. Now, kichidi has different names in, across different regions in India. In the north, south, east, west, every state has their own form of kichidi. But the point that we're trying to make is the immense value of eating this. Most of us out there, our minds have been brainwashed by certain things that we're constantly told on social media and all of these things. Okay, but when we go into the traditional wisdom of our ancestors of what they ate, what they still eat, okay, and what we should really be eating, we want to talk about today why, why uh, kichidi should be the superfood. You see, it's existed for the longest time, but we've replaced it with all our fancy foods, all our fancy cuisines, all of these other foods that we think is adding health benefits. I'm not against all of these foods, do it, but if you think you can replace your staple diet and improve your health by doing everything else, it's not gonna work that way. Because you see, the thing, like things like kichidi never caused diabetes in the country. Things like kichidi never brought on illnesses or cardiovascular problems or cancer. What did was a change in lifestyle. So you can't blame a food. You go to South India today, everyone's condemning idlis and dosas and curd rice and all of that stuff. Well, people, that didn't cause your diseases. A sedentary lifestyle causes your disease, overeating the wrong foods, cooking it with the wrong oil, eating too much, moving too less, sleeping too less, has all caused our diseases today. The moment you mention kichidi, most of the diabetics wake up and say, oh, my doctor said, don't eat rice. I'm not supposed to eat rice. And they act like rice has caused their diabetes, where we all know that rice has not caused your diabetes. Rice is not the reason why you're fat. Rice is not the reason why you're unable to lose weight. We need to understand because you've been eating it the wrong way, you've been eating too much of it, you've not been combining it with the right lentils or the right vegetables, or your diet is completely out of balance, and that's when the food can possibly be one of the factors that causes the disease that you have today. Now, when you break down a kichiri, and that's exactly what we've, what we've been doing, I took one of my clinical dietitians, her name is Harshala, and we sat down, and over the last few days, we have been breaking down kichiri to the most minute detail. A lot of you who have been following me have been noticing that I've been pro practically eating kichiri for the last two months. Okay, why do I eat it? Number one, I don't get bored of it. Number two, I've been in the best health possible ever. There's been no change in my body, there's been no change. In fact, the positive change is that if I have kichidi for lunch, I'm not hungry by three o'clock, I'm not hungry by four o'clock, I'm actually hungry by the time it's dinner. Because kichidi is such a wholesome meal with a fine balance of carbohydrates, good fats, protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Technically, we should all be eating less. We should have two great meals in a day which are able to keep us full throughout. If you're not intermittent fasting, then a great breakfast as well. But all this snacking in between is unnecessary. The very reason that we need to snack in every two to two and a half hours is because our main meal hasn't been wholesome or sufficient enough. When our main meal isn't wholesome or sufficient enough, we start feeling hungry and then there's someone who's selling us a snack. And we're constantly eating more and more. Like I always say, digestion best happens when it's slower. So a normal vegetarian meal roughly takes about three to three and a half hours to digest completely in the human body. A non-vegetarian meal can take anywhere between four to six hours depending on the kind of animal protein you ate. So if I'm eating every two, two and a half hours, I've not even finished digesting my lunch and I'm already snacking on something else. I've not even finished digesting my breakfast and I'm already snacking on a midday snack. So we don't give our digestive systems a time to complete their entire job. We produce more acids, we use more digestive enzymes constantly because we're eating more and more. It is a myth 
that you need more snacks and more eating to be boost your metabolism. Your metabolism is not is not dependent on how frequently you snack. Your metabolism is dependent on how well you slept last night, how wholesome your meals are. Do you have the right vitamins and minerals? Do you have the right kind of activity in your life? Activity will boost your metabolism faster than snacking throughout the day. There is a small population of people like diabetics and very few people who may need constant food every two to two and a half hours because of their condition. But for everyone else, we got to go back to the discipline of how our ancestors ate. They didn't snack throughout the day. They ate a heavy meal if they had a lot of physical labor in the day. They had their meal at noontime and then they had an early dinner and that was all that was required. Now, of course, if you're working out heavy, you need a pre-workout meal, post-workout meal. That's completely different. Just get the point. So coming back to a khichdi, it is a fine, beautiful, intelligent, wise balance of great carbohydrates, great fats, great protein, great fiber, vitamins, and minerals. There's a reason why your doctors and your parents probably changed your diet to khichdi when you were sick, because khichdi is a very easily digestible food. You see, foods which are hard to digest uses a lot of digestive energy. Your body uses a lot of energy to break down a lot of foods. So when you were sick, you were put on khichdi because your doctors understood or your ancestors understood that your meal should be easily digested and assimilated and absorbed so that most of the energy can now go towards the healing of your sickness. If you divert energy from healing towards digestion, you already have a problem of getting better. You're slowing down the entire process, which is why it is so important that when we're sick, we eat foods which are very light, which the body spends very little digestive energy on breaking down. Okay, now you make it a complete protein. When you mix rice with a lentil, when you mix rice with the right quantity of lentils, it becomes a complete protein. We need to understand this. Everyone thinks rice is carbohydrates, lentils are protein and carbohydrates. On paper, in your nutritional books, that is how it will appear. But foods work as synergies together. When you mix two foods together, they work better. For example, turmeric is great, but turmeric mixed with black pepper is even better because the black pepper has piperine that will help you absorb the goodness of tur turmeric into your blood system. So you see, foods work as synergies, the combination of food. So when you take rice and you eat plain rice, obviously you're going to have a spike in your sugar levels, you're going to have an issue with your weight and all of those things. But if you intelligently mix rice with a lentil with the right fat it becomes a complete protein so of course today we are going to uh, we are going to share a recipe of the perfect khichdi that we have designed gram to gram protein to protein okay the second thing it soothes your intestinal walls today most people have a problem with their gut most people whether you have autoimmune whether you have hashimoto's you have lupus you have uh, psoriasis eczema you have Crohn's, you have IBS, you have indigestion, flatulence, bloating. These are all gut and digestive issues. When you move on to khichdi, and when I say khichdi, you don't have to eat it all the time. I'm just trying to use it as a healing food. It soothes your intestinal linings, which means it can reduce your inflammation. The second beauty is it reduces inflammation because of the ingredients that you have in it. You add turmeric, you add the goodness of green vegetables, you add spices which are had highly anti-inflammatory. That helps you reduce the inflammation of your intestinal walls. So people with IBS, that's irritation of your gut. People with Crohn's, people with constipation. This is all inflammation of the gut. And yes, you should move to a diet that has primarily khichdi. I'm not saying you need to eat khichdi at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even once a day will, will make that a healing food for your gut problems. It is gluten-free since so many people today are gluten intolerant and so many people make themselves believe that they're gluten intolerant. Khichdi is a great food because it's got absolutely no gluten in it. Now the beauty is Ayurveda uses, uh, uses khichdi as a healing food because Ayurveda believes, you know, there are three doshas that everyone has, okay, and Ayurveda believes that Kichidi can balance all three doshas irrespective of what your dosha is. That's why it's called a tri-doshic food because it has the ability to balance all of your doshas. So if you follow that system of medicine, it's great for you. You don't follow Ayurveda, it's still great for you because it actually brings about balance in your body, in your gut at a cellular level. Now the recipe that we share today that we've been working on is nothing but a simple 
lentil kichiri. The reason we started working on this is because we want to combat malnutrition in the villages across India. And we are of the belief today that using something as simple as lentil kichiri, one portion could be 300 grams. And that can give you something as simple as 17 to 18 grams of clean protein. You mix it with a bowl of curd or a glass of buttermilk, that takes your protein up to 23.4 grams of protein. Most vegetarians out there have to admit that, oh, we need animal protein, we need whey protein shakes and all of that stuff. Of course, if you're, watch, if, if you're a bodybuilder, you're an athlete and you're watching this, yes, you will need additional protein. I'm talking for the masses, I'm talking for the layman out there. You can get 23.4 grams of protein from your kitchen with the right accompaniment, which could be buttermilk, which could be curd, you're vegan, you're going to get 19 grams at least of protein. But there are so many things that you can add to boost up the total protein of your food. So everyone who has that mindset, oh, kitchidi is carbs, change your mindset. You need to change your mindset. Kitchidi is not carbs. Kitchidi is a complete protein. Yes, it has carbs. Yes, it has good fats like ghee. But the synergy of everything together makes it a complete protein. And I'm yet to see anyone who is putting on weight with kitchidi. In fact, as we speak, we have hundreds and hundreds of people who have moved on to kitchidi over the last couple of days and they are reporting weight loss for the first time in their lives. They are reporting a reduction of acidity, bloating, flatulence, and all of these issues. The best part about kitchidi, it's got this satiety factor. You feel so good. When you, when you have a wholesome meal. Someone who's only having a bowl of salad feels deprived and that's why they have cravings and that's why you have a food lobby selling you sugar-free biscuits and all of these things to satisfy you because you didn't have a wholesome food. You see, food is love to the human brain. That's why there are ceremonies about around food. That's why people socialize around food. Food should be wholesome to basically make you feel satisfied and content. There's a whole load of people today who deprive and are psychologically deprived because they keep doing all these diets that deprive them of all their macro and micronutrients and they're irritable in their minds, they're frustrated, they're snappy and they, they just get into this vicious cycle because they lose two to three kilos and they put it all back on when they start binging. When your brain is deprived of the food that it needs, you're good for maybe one week, two weeks and three weeks and then all of a sudden you start binging all over again. But you have a wholesome meal. You try having a wholesome kitchen at lunch and you'll find that you don't get hungry for the next four to five hours because you've got the right amount of fat that's going to keep you full and satisfied for the next three to four hours. So it's as simple as that. Now the next point that I wanted to share about is over the next couple of days we will share with you different recipes. You see, well, we live in a country that we should be proud of when it comes to our culture, when it comes to the amount of recipes that there are. You can make kitchidi with rice, you can make kitchidi with bajra, you can make kitchidi with millets, with so many different grains. So we're going to try to share as many recipes as we can. There's something better about kitchidi as well. We just spoke about it being a complete protein. But when we're looking at malnutrition, our entire study looks at children between the age group of six, right up to women and young pregnant women. They don't just need protein, carbs and fats. They need minerals, they need calcium, they need iron, they need beta carotene, they need their omegas, they need their B vitamins and they need their folates. All of this together will help us to boost up the health of malnourished children, adults, pregnant women, women, and everyone, everyone. We shouldn't really be looking at below poverty line as malnourished. We have malnourished human beings even in urban states across India. Because although everyone's munching on pumpkin seeds and all these superfoods, most people have a malabsorption in their gut, which means they're eating, but they're not absorbing and assimilating vitamins and nutrients the right way. So Kichidi has all of these things that we spoke about. So the recipe that we are going to share today, gram by gram, ingredient by ingredient, with the directions to make it, is going to give you about 15.4 grams of protein. You have an accompaniment with a glass of buttermilk or a bowl of curd. Okay, a 300 gram serving of Kichidi is going to take your protein up to roughly 23 grams of beautiful protein. You add a salad to that, like cut cucumber, onion, carrot, or whatever it is, you're enhancing the nutrition, but it becomes a complete meal. A hot kitchidi with a teaspoon or two teaspoons of pure melting ghee, and you will be satisfied, you will be blissful. The thing is, our mindsets are such that we look at kitchidi as a poor man's food. We look at it as a food for sick people. You know, the only people sick are us today, and that's why we're going back to kitchidi and stuff like that. 
because the human mind is drawn towards variety and the way food is packaged and all this nitrogen rich food and you get your food and you have smoke flowing from all over underneath your dessert plate and all of that stuff. That's only to get your mind addicted to the fanciness of the food. What about that food? That food hardly has any nutrition in. Have that once in a way to basically satisfy, you know, your psyche and all of that stuff and to feel good about it. But your staple diet should be wholesome, nutritious food because your human body and your cells care about one thing. Am I getting the right amount of nutrition to survive and to do all of my functions? It doesn't care about what your conscious mind is looking for, whether it's variety, whether it's for all of these things. They say variety is the spice of life, but variety today has caused the most discomfort and the most dis-ease in most human beings. And because we have so much of variety, it's instant gratification. Each and every one of us can right now say, I want Thai food and through an app, we can order Thai food in the next one hour. So it's convenient, it's great for us, but it's also cre created this thing called instant gratification where at a click of a button, we can get satisfied immediately. And that's why it's so difficult for us to be disciplined. That's why it's so difficult for people to live a routine life. Diets, exercise, all of these things are secondary. Most people don't achieve their health goals because they lack discipline, they lack commitment, and they lack the ability to put in effort. It's as simple as that. So am I saying you should eat kitchari every single day? Absolutely not. But if you're going through a condition, you enjoy kitchari, try as much of variation as you can because it is a healing food for your children as well. Today, young children are being fed on junk food. And that's why they have so much of colic, they have so much of acidity, they have so many skin issues, low immune problems and all of that stuff. You feed them on the basics to grow up into a healthy young adult. That is your responsibility as a parent. Feeding them junk is nothing good that you're doing to them. You're not adding value to their lives. You're not adding value to anything. In fact, we're creating a platform for them to fall sick at some point. So keep it in balance, keep it simple. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep. In the thread of today's video, we will be posting the complete recipe, gram to gram, ingredient to ingredient and directions on how to make it. It's as simple as that. The portion will be roughly about 300 grams. If you're a big person, you have a lot of physical activity in your life, increase it. What's the right amount of grams you should eat? No one in the world can tell you that. Only you can tell yourself that. If you mindfully listen to your body and eat, there'll be days that you, your body needs more food. Eat more food. As long as you're feeding physical hunger and not emotional hunger, you don't have a problem at all. Have a great day, everyone.